If you've followed this channel for a while, you'll know that I don't normally make videos about new Blender features unless there's a totally new version of Blender just about to be released. But the Blender development team just dropped such a massive bombshell, I don't see how I can't talk about it. So the guys over at Blender have been posting all these cryptic references on social media about a new announcement just called X. And it didn't take people long to realise that Cycles is 10 years old this month. X is of course the number 10 in Roman numerals. In case you're unaware, Cycles actually started life as an add-on developed by Brecht van Lommel, who's now a senior developer for Blender. Cycles technically still is an add-on, you can actually disable it in the preferences. So Brecht and another senior developer, Sergey, have been working on this project called Cycles X. It's a six month long project to improve Cycles, and even though it's only been going for about two months, it's already looking very promising. The goal of the project is to improve the architecture of Cycles for future development, improve usability of the viewport, improve GPU and CPU rendering, and introduce some more advanced rendering algorithms. So far they've basically accomplished all of these things, at least to some extent. The improvements so far are mostly due to new kernels for the GPU and scheduling algorithms. The performance improvement on GPU is massive, up to 7 times faster in some cases already. The results using CUDA or an RTX graphics card are really impressive, and those times get reduced even further when optics rendering is enabled. Bear in mind that optics support was only added for Cycles X in the last few days, so there's probably a lot more performance to be found down the line. In fact, there's still 4 months left in this whole project, and Brecht has already said they've still got plenty of ideas floating around for how they can bring down render times even more. These new improvements that have already been implemented seem to favour more complex scenes, specifically interior scenes where there's lots of bounce lighting. Another way they've improved cycles is to get rid of the tile system in favour of progressive sampling. Right now, if you render something in cycles, Blender will break down all the pixels into little tiles which independently get rendered until completion, then it moves on to the next batch of tiles until the image is complete. But with progressive sampling, every single pixel in the image gets updated all at once. There's already a progressive render mode in cycles, but it is very slow and not well optimised. This new version, however, will actually be faster. An advantage of progressive rendering is that you get to leave it running indefinitely and you can just stop it whenever you're happy with the level of noise. And of course you get to see the whole image as soon as you hit render, just like you do with viewport rendering. Speaking of the viewport, it's had a performance increase on GPU and CPU. It's now faster in general, it's smoother when you navigate around, and it now has adaptive sampling incorporated straight into the viewport, which significantly bring down the time that it takes to get a nice clean image in the viewport. The developers have also been talking about the idea of introducing path guiding in the Blender, which would be really exciting for me personally. It's something I've wanted to see for quite a while. Unless you read a lot of papers about light transportation algorithms, you might have heard of path guiding before. The idea's been kicking around for a couple of years now, and it's already implemented into a few render engines. I think Pixar's Renderman engine has it. In layman's terms, it essentially builds out a map that describes the shape of the lighting in the scene so that the samples can be more efficiently distributed for better results. The outcome is faster render times and less noise especially in situations where lots of noisy bounce lighting is in the scene, like a dark room with a bright window outside. So if they get the path guiding to work properly in Blender, that could be something really cool. Now, of course, it's very early days for the Cycles X project. At the moment, it's a completely separate branch of Blender, and it probably won't appear in the main version of Blender until version 3.1 or after. There's lots of things that don't work very well right now, or just don't work at all. For instance, there's no support at the moment for volumetrics or multi-GPU rendering. The original Blender denoiser is going to be depreciated in this version of Cycles 2, since the AI denoisers tend to do a better job in almost every scenario, there's no reason to keep supporting it. One way that they've streamlined Cycles is to just use one set of GPU kernels. Long story short, it only works with NVIDIA GPUs right now because OpenCL support has been removed. However, they are working with Intel and AMD to get those manufacturers to support the new kernels on their cards. So hopefully, if you've got an AMD or an Intel GPU, you'll just have to install a driver update to use the future versions of Cycles. The developers did stress that supporting all the common GPUs is a continued goal of Blender, so I don't think you're going to have much to worry about if you've got an AMD or an Intel GPU. 
especially as both of those companies financially support the development of Blender and they often work really closely with the Blender team on stuff like this. Getting extra features and performance out of cycles is obviously a good thing at the best of times, but it couldn't have came at a better time than right now. As you might be aware, there's an ongoing worldwide shortage of microprocessors caused by a whole host of factors like COVID, new games consoles being launched, crypto miners, and just a general demand increase caused by so many people working from home. Long story short, upgrading for a new GPU at a reasonable price right now is basically impossible. Four year old graphics cards are now selling for more than they cost when they were brand new, and it's pretty much impossible to get a decent deal. So any improvement to Blender that can help people squeeze a little bit extra performance out of the current hardware is very welcome in my book, especially considering the shortages are expected to last till at least the end of the year, if not longer. So let me know in the comments if you're as hyped about the new Cycles project as I am. I'll leave a bunch of interesting links in the description that you might want to check out, including a link to the experimental build of Cycles X. I did have another video planned, which was supposed to come out today, but when I saw this announcement, I just figured it can wait. That video will be out in the next few days though, so keep an eye out for that. I think it's going to be a good one, but I mean, I would say that. See you later, guys.